Welcome to my scientifically informed insider look at mental health topics. If you find this video to be interesting or helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, what is the downside of having socially desirable personality characteristics? Now to answer this question, I'll be using a study published in 2016 by a researcher named Boudreaux. And I'll put the reference to this article in the description of this video. Now, this study looked at this question from the perspective of the five-factor model. And really, the question looked at was around personality-related difficulties at the extremes of personality traits on the five-factor model. So what we're talking about here are not necessarily mental disorders, but again, just problems that are related to extremes on personality traits. And these could be a lot of different types of problems. Some line up somewhat well with mental disorders, and others don't. But either way, we know the five-factor model can predict certain types of difficulties. So taking a quick look at the five-factor model, we see the acronym OCEAN used here. So we have five traits, openness to experience, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and eroticism. And in terms of the scores on these different traits, I'll be looking at the 10 poles, the high and the low of each of these traits. But it's important to understand what profile is considered socially desirable versus undesirable. So typically, the socially desirable profile would be high scores in openness, conscientiousness, extroversion, and agreeableness, and a low score in neuroticism. And of course, that means the socially undesirable profile would be a low score in openness, conscientiousness, extroversion, and agreeableness, and a high score in neuroticism. A lot of the research literature really pays attention to that socially undesirable personality profile and there's not a lot of attention given to the extreme scores moving in the socially desirable direction. Now this is interesting because both the high and low poles of each of the traits, of course, are associated with difficulties. So the concern here is that mental health clinicians may be missing a lot of potential difficulties by ignoring certain scores on personality traits. So in order to answer this question about the downside of socially desirable traits, I'll really be looking at the downside of both socially desirable and socially undesirable traits. So I'll be reviewing the high and low scores, all 10 poles associated with the five traits. And I'll be moving from the socially undesirable direction toward the socially desirable direction and going in the order of the acronym OCEAN. So I'll be starting with openness to experience. So with the trait openness to experience, we see somebody that would be imaginative, creative, be invested in fantasy, and this is also associated with being intellectually curious. So with the low openness to experience, and again, this would be starting with socially undesirable, we see difficulty adjusting to change, an indifference toward the feelings and thoughts of other people, having difficulty thinking creatively, and having a lack of curiosity and imagination. So moving to the socially desirable side, we see, of course, high openness to experience, and this is associated with being excessively detached from the conventions of society, being excessively imaginative, being lost in one's own internal world, so lost in fantasy, and having beliefs that are not grounded in reality. So we see some of the symptoms here of schizotypal personality disorder. Other characteristics associated with high openness would be being in trouble with the law and being overly self-critical. So moving now to conscientiousness, and the socially undesirable side, of course, would be low in conscientiousness. Here we see difficulties with impulse control, difficulty achieving goals, and being easily distracted. Looking at high conscientiousness, we see working too hard, a difficulty giving up control, being stringent, a preoccupation with rules, order, schedules, and organization, difficulty making decisions quickly, and perfectionism. So a number of these characteristics line up with obsessive compulsive personality disorder. Not obsessive compulsive disorder, that's different, but rather the personality disorder. So now looking at extroversion, and we'll start with low extroversion, that's socially undesirable, and we see anhedonia and social withdrawal. So anhedonia is the inability to experience positive emotions, and of course social withdrawal means withdrawing from social situations and being isolated. Now, on the socially desirable side, we see high scores in extroversion being associated with being overly controlling, having intense attachments, 
so forming really close relationships that could be maladaptive. We also see excessive risk-taking, being flaunty, a tendency to exaggerate, being unrealistically optimistic, being hyperactive, and being loquacious, so talking too much. Now, in terms of agreeableness, we'll start with low agreeableness. Here we see arrogance, manipulativeness, and being argumentative. Now, looking at high agreeableness, we see self-denigration, being dependent, gullible, deferential, feeling ineffective, and feeling useless. So some of the characteristics here with high agreeableness line up with dependent personality disorder. So now moving to the last trait in the five-factor model, this is neuroticism. And of course, neuroticism is flipped around in terms of social desirability with the socially undesirable scores being higher in neuroticism. So I'll start there. So high scores in neuroticism are associated with social inhibition, low self-esteem, and difficulty controlling emotions. Low neuroticism, which is generally considered more socially desirable, is associated with risk-taking, being emotionless, acting out against others in society. So some of the symptoms we see associated with psychopathy and antisocial personality disorder, which are two constructs that overlap quite a bit. We also see a lack of a sense of humor and difficulty recognizing facial expressions. So with the five-factor model, when we look at the 10 poles, when we look at the extremes, the highs and the lows, we see that there are downsides to both the low scores and the high scores, regardless of what is normally considered socially desirable. I hope you found this description about the downside of socially desirable personality characteristics to be interesting. Thanks for watching.